Good morning, Denise Dryden here. I'm on Bainbridge Island looking at the water but up against this magnificent cedar tree. Um, I thought it was a good spot to sit uh, when we're talking about the topic of uh, do no harm. Do no harm. Consciously do no harm. Because when you build a house and when you develop an island, there has to be a point where you go, this is more essential as a piece of this island that needs to stay here than taking it down and using it for lumber. So there's a commitment and there's a, a um, vision of the future. So I thought I'd sit in front of this little, this old guy, this is the father tree, um, and see what, uh, what wants to happen when I'm sitting right underneath him. So today, do no harm. It's the Hippocratic Oath. It's first, do no harm. It's inspired, of course, <laughs> by um, last week's Outlander series. I'm on season four, and uh, Claire is a med medical healer. And um, the topic of the episode was do no harm. And it sort of sat there and started working um, with all of the experiences I'm having with my clients right now and with life. So I thought I would bring that to you. It's hip um, do no harm. First, do no harm is um, from Hippocrates. It's Greek. And bringing this into another blend, um, I want to tie this into the work I do with parents. who Parents who, I think I've said this before in the video, I work with families that have placed their teenager or young adult into an out-of-home uh, therapeutic program. We, and they've done that in order to break this downward spiraling cycles and patterns that existed you know, of course, in their teen, right? <laughs> and the teen is often exhibiting the familial pains. You know, this teen didn't get there by himself or herself. It exists in the family system. So it's kind of sad and kind of wonderful to take somebody out of a family system and say, we're gonna give you some, play, some, some peace and some time to heal yourself. And in the meantime, we have to kind of look at this deeper family system that exists and, and watch what we can, what you're doing, what we can do and sort of match you. So do no harm is also based on releasing this lifelong process of focusing on solutions um, in, in, into creating breakthroughs, like deep changes in healing all within the family system. So it's sort of taking the, the what do we do, what do we do, what do we do, Sis, you know, solution space to backing off and saying, what else can we do? So I want to start with the idea that when we are looking at family systems and when we are looking at harm, we are looking at energy signatures. And these energy signatures are passed through familial systems. Hang in there with me. Let me say that again. These harmful energy signatures are passed down through family systems. So we'll start with fear. Fear is pervasive and fear exists and you can trace it to what your grandparents were afraid of, what your parents were afraid of, what you're afraid of, what you see your children being afraid of. Usually fear involves anxiety, worry, and control. These are vibrational signatures that we hold within our core being, you know, in the, in the core of our body. And we duplicate them. We duplicate them from our parents and we duplicate them down and pass them on to our children. So this pattern of holding on to something and then bringing it in and festering it and then passing it on is what we're talking about, I'm gonna talk about as do no harm. So when there is fear, there is an internal and an external reaction right? So we feel things inside and we also do things on the outside. So when we do things on the outside externally, um, it can look like hypervigilance, control, a lack of trust, overmanagement, <laughs> distraction, and self-medicating. So let me show you how that works. We do all of this to ourselves and then we pass it on to others. So if we self-medicate with sugar, with food. It makes sense that if you, if I were to open your pantry and refrigerator, it would be so full of things that have sugar <laughs> and massive quantities of food. 
So whether you're doing it just for yourself or it makes you feel good, you've now created an entire system where it's present for everybody. If we overmanage, we do this with our own time, our own homes, our partners, and our children. So our children are overscheduled. They are overmanaged. They are, you know, the helicopter mom, right? The helicopter dad. If we distract, we fill our days with too many things to do. We overschedule and we rely on busyness. Make sense? When we distract, we overschedule our kids. We overschedule our own time, our money, our friends, our house. There's no time in our household system for peace. We are passing along these harms to our next generation. We pass along anxiety and worry on a systemic level. So this might look like diabetes. This might look like autoimmune. This might look like cancer. This might look like attention deficit. You take someone, in, in, in my particular strain of work, you take someone who's empathic or highly sensitive, they're going to be really reactive to this kind of stuff. So how do we step out of harming and we do no harm? First one, we stop and own it. This is where I am right now. This is me. I'm awake. I'm paying attention. I'm ready. I'm ready to stop being in denial. Right? I'm here. Wide awake, paying attention. Number two, um, explore methods for listening to your body. Your body is always communicating with you. It'll tell us where it hurts, where it um, where it's off. It'll tell you when it's not working really well. And all of this is based on cause and effect, right? Cause and effect. What we do shows up someplace else. So um, whether it's in neck and shoulder pain or stomach or digestive issues or sleep or the inability to go to sleep and never having enough sleep, um, the way that our lower backs can just scream at us at times, these are all messages, right? They're telling us something's off. So a great tool that I've used, and you can find it in other videos, are Alan Seal's Polarity, where you stand in one spot or the other spot, and I think I've just used it recently. And you move back and forth, and you let your body talk to you. You feel it. You get quiet. Create some quiet space where you say, I want to, I'm actually going to listen to you this time, and we're going to play back and forth, and I'm going to pay attention to what I feel. And I'm going to notice it. And there's a book, and I'll put it in the footnotes, or in the um, footnotes, the posts um, below this, um, this live post. Jacques Martel wrote a book called The Complete Dictionary of Disease and Ailments. And any time that I have something going on, whether it's something in my stomach, or something in my ears, or something in my jaw, I'll go look it up. And then it's going like, so what are you not paying attention to? <laughs> so when you really want to step out of denial and you want to start working on these things, that's the kind of tool that's really helpful. Number three, untangle your thoughts. Give them some space and time to unravel the tension. It's almost as if our brains are in this tight little knot and we don't know what to do and we can't find a, a solution and we can't find a pathway out. But we have to give that, 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 that knot some time and space and sort of loosely play with it. If you've ever worked with a messed up ball of yarn, you know this. Apply the tools to yourself to unravel it. What we're really looking for is for that knot to relent. Stop. Loosen up. Let go. So whether it's yoga or walking in silence or mind, um, mindless repetitive things that uh, DBT does, something that, that gets your body moving in a certain way and releases that sort of chatter of the brain. Number four, examine your paths. Where are you stuck and rigid and in a repetitive sort of rut? Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. This is what I do. This is what I do. I have no flexibility. This is what I do. And look at that. Where does it show up? Are you angry all the time at your spouse? Are you putting outer blame on your kids or life or these things that pile up? Are you overworked? Are you dissatisfied? Are you hiding pain? What are your paths and your choices? And how aware are you of these? How aware are you? Where are you open and flexible? Good question. 
<laughs> Let's see, number five. What is the truth? Do you even know what the truth is? Can you speak your truth and do you know how to access it? So find your truth. Find a way to speak your truth. Start small. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is what I want to do. This is what I don't want to do. This is what matters to me. This is what doesn't matter to me. And make sure at all times that it's lined up with exactly who you are and what you know to be the truth. Number six, establish clarity. What you now know. Be decisive, strong, fierce, and then gentle. Like this is what I know. This is what I know I need to do and then hold it in this level of compassion and gentleness, which is I have to start being decisive about who I am and what I need to do for my body, for my family, for my system, for the world maybe. <laughs> so this pattern stops now, right now, forever, done, gone. This is what I'm committing to. And number seven, set intentions. Now, intentions are not goals. Intentions are how I feel. So explore how I feel when I'm open or relaxed or mindful or calm or happy or flexible. <laughs> this is what I know I feel like when. And this is what I want to feel like when that happens. I want to go to work and be happy about being there. I want to feel that sort of little flutter in my stomach like, I wonder who's going to call today and what work we get to do together. I want to have some feelings that I can recognize and, and not just this numb rut. I want an intention of how to feel and I trust I will get there and I can't force it. And all I can do is invite this intention which is I want to create a world where my children are relaxed, I'm relaxed, where my spouse and I have time, where I have a place to unravel, where I have a place to stop passing on mindlessly the pains that I hold. I want to stop doing harm. So this is the kind of stuff that I do. I'm a coach. You can find me on denisedrydencoaching.com. We work remote. You can be anywhere in the country or the world and we do some work over Zoom. Uh, look me up. Give me a call. Drop me an email. We'll have a, sip, a cup of tea, sip together, and uh, see what wants to happen. You have a wonderful Sunday. We're heading into the Thanksgiving week, so enjoy that time. Relax, eat some good food, talk with some people, and look at those family systems. Watch where it all comes from. Take care. Bye-bye.